the Boulder shooting investigation continues. We too want to know why. Why that King Supers? Why Boulder? Why Monday? As the Colorado community prepares to lay Officer Eric Talley and the other victims to rest. There were times I thought we would never get to trial. A murder conviction eight years in the making. But in the end, I didn't get Kelsey back. And that's what I wanted more than anything. Yet the family of Kelsey Schelling is still searching for answers. As the saying goes, time heals all wounds, but it is certainly difficult to think of the future while the memories of Monday are still fresh. As Boulder and our Colorado community work to pick up the pieces, investigators are working hard on the many still unanswered questions about this tragedy. Good evening and welcome to Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Ogden. Thanks for joining us tonight. The Boulder County DA says more charges will be filed against the suspect in the King Super shooting. DA Michael Doherty and Boulder Police Chief Maris Harold held a news conference today to provide an update on the investigation. Denver 7's Lance Hernandez is live in Boulder at 5. And Lance, a lot of man hours have already been spent trying to get to the bottom of all this. They certainly have, and countless hours will be spent down the road. I'm in front of police headquarters where a number of community members are paying their respects to fallen officer Eric Talley. Today we learned that individuals from 25 different local, state, and federal agencies have spent thousands of hours on this case. Their main focus? To try to determine the shooter's motive. On Monday, Boulder suffered devastating, horrific, and traumatic attack to our community. Investigators are still trying to answer questions about that devastating attack. Chief among them, why? Like the rest of the community, we too want to know why. Why that King Supers? Why Boulder? Why Monday? And unfortunately, at this time, we still don't have those answers. Boulder's police chief and the Boulder County DA say they are committed to ensuring that justice is done for each of the victims and their loved ones, including fallen officer Eric Talley. It takes a great man to step in how he did, you know, it, for the community to protect the community. Tally made the ultimate sacrifice for Boulder. Today, Colt and Josie Jones brought flowers to his memorial. I think of his family. I raised seven kids, and I can't imagine what his wife or his children are going through, and it breaks my heart. Many people are wondering if the mass casualty shooting was linked to terrorism. The FBI, CBI, and all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing a deep dive into the offender's background as well as the background of, uh, of everybody involved in this incident, victims, witnesses, and so forth. And at this point, we don't have any particular information to share in that regard. The DA says he's being measured about the information released because he wants to ensure a fair trial in Boulder. If we share too much about the facts of the investigation, it's possible we'll see a motion by the defense to move this trial to somewhere else in the state of Colorado. Ten counts of first-degree murder and one count of attempted first-degree murder have been filed against the suspect. Doherty says more charges will be filed in the weeks to come. Now, some people have questioned the police department's response in this case. Today, Boulder PD responded on Twitter that Officer Talley led a team of officers into that store within 30 seconds after they arrived. They emphasized 30 seconds. The suspect shot at the officers, killing Talley in the process. Police say that no other individuals were shot or killed after those heroic officers entered the store. In Boulder, Lance Hernandez, Denver 7. And Officer Eric Talley's funeral will be held at 11 a.m. on Tuesday, March 30th at Flatirons Community Church in Lafayette. The funeral is public. Space, though, will be limited due to the pandemic. And the family is allowing local news stations to carry the service so that the community can mourn together. You can pay your respects by tuning in to Denver 7 on Tuesday morning. Our coverage starts at 430, leading up to that 11 a.m. service. You can also watch it live on all of our streaming platforms and the DenverChannel.com. And a charity is hoping to help the Talley family through this tough time. Tunnels to Towers will pay off the mortgage of his home by Easter Sunday. This foundation's first responder home program pays off the homes of first responders killed in the line. And Boulder's police chief says the department is so moved by the foundation's generosity. 23-year-old Nevin Stanisich will be the first of the 10 victims to be laid to rest. His family will hold a private funeral this weekend. They are asking for privacy as they continue to mourn their loss. 
they are inviting people who wish to pay their respects to visit a memorial that's set up in front of the family's church. It's St. John the Baptist Serbian Orthodox Church in Lakewood. A new resource center opened in Boulder today to offer support to survivors and really to the whole community. The services provided include crisis counseling, access to law enforcement and therapy dogs. Now the Family Assistance Center is on 63rd near Butte Mill Road. It is open from 10 to 7 through Sunday. The Colorado Avalanche are showing support for the Boulder community in their own way. Take a look at the team's jerseys before last night's game against the Vegas Golden Knights. They all say on the back, Boulder Strong, with the number 10 on them, honoring the number of lives lost in the shooting. The players will autograph the jerseys and auction them off next week through kscgivesmart.com, and all the proceeds will go to the Colorado Healing Fund. So much needed rain making its way across the Front Range right now. And it's not going to stick around for long. Meteorologist Stacy Donaldson is joining us now with the latest on this. Hi, Stacy. Hey there. Yes, this is a quick moving system and we have rain and snow moving across the state as we speak. And we'll continue to see rain until the temperatures drop to support snowfall here for the Front Range. So we'll expect those temperatures to be in the low 30s as we head through the next few hours. But as you see right now, we have rain along the I-25 corridor, snow as you head up I-70 off to the west and the foothills and the higher elevations. And up toward Fort Collins, we've had a mix of light rain and snow as well. And the same down to the south toward Colorado Springs. More snowfall once you pass Castle Rock down toward Colorado Springs. And then we have the snow up in the higher elevations as well. Coming up, I'll let you know well, how long this snow will last and what your weekend forecast is looking like. All right, we've just learned that Denver Public School Board uh, member Tay Anderson is facing allegations of sexual assault. The group Black Lives Matter 5280 released a statement on Twitter leveling the claim this afternoon. The group says a woman came forward in late February accusing Anderson of assault. They say the alleged victim is seeking restorative justice, not legal justice. She is asking that Anderson issue a public apology and seek help from a licensed professional. With that in mind, Denver 7 is taking careful steps in how we confirm and report this allegation. Typically, we work through the legal process to confirm such allegations. Now, Anderson tells Denver 7 he has sought legal counsel and is not able to comment. The Denver Public School Board president says the board is aware of the post, but does not have enough information to weigh in at this time. Now, BLM 5280 is not commenting further, but told Denver 7 it will talk about sexual violence at a later date. That group says Anderson is not welcome as a part of BLM 5280 until he has, quote, accounted for himself in these ways. A fight for justice lasting eight long years, and in this case, a conviction hasn't led to answers in the disappearance of Kelsey Schelling. And tonight on ABC's 2020, this Colorado case is in the national spotlight during a special two-hour episode. Our Liz Gillardi has covered this case for years and has this preview along with a message from Kelsey's friend. Coloradans searched alongside the family of Kelsey Schelling. People don't just go missing. They held memorials and even protested outside the Pueblo Police Department, demanding justice. I think, honestly, had Laura not fought as hard as she did for Kelsey, that none of this would have happened. My daughter, Kelsey Schelling. It's been a long road for Kelsey's mom, Laura Saxton. She became a fierce advocate for her daughter. Then 21 years old, Kelsey vanished on February 4th, 2013. She was eight weeks pregnant. Mysterious disappearance. The disappearance of Kelsey Schelling. A two hour 2020 true crime investigation shines a new light on a case still unresolved in so many ways. Earlier this month, Kelsey's boyfriend, Dante Lucas, was convicted of first degree murder, but her family and friends are haunted by questions left unanswered. The trial's over and Kelsey still hasn't been found. I've just felt very lost and very empty. Her college roommate, Allie Cox, testified at the trial. She thinks about Kelsey every day. Yeah, all the time. I miss her so much. Sorry. Allie says she witnessed what she described as verbal abuse and a toxic relationship. She hopes Kelsey's story on a national platform can save other lives. I really feel like she was a voice for someone that, you know, if anyone's in a situation where they're with somebody that, you know, they don't feel is right for them or they feel is doing them any sort of harm, that it's okay to walk away. Um, 
Kelsey was kind of the worst case scenario, unfortunately, in the situation, and she didn't get that chance. Kelsey's mom has continued to be her voice ever since that first press conference with police. We are doing everything in our power to find our missing loved one. And over the years, when it seemed like there wasn't any progress with the case. There were times I thought we would never get to trial. Kelsey's killer was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, a murder trial eight years in the making. For her friends and family, it's always been about fighting for the truth. I feel like it honestly should have happened much sooner. Um, I wish it happened much sooner, but I'm glad that it did happen. But I feel like eight years is too long. Allie hopes he will do the right thing and tell Kelsey's family where the body is. Because at this point, he has nothing else to lose. A trial now over, but the search for Kelsey continues. The fact hasn't changed that, you know, we don't have her and he's not talking. I, I have a lot of fear for the rest of my life having to live like this. Liz Gilardi, Denver 7. And you can watch the special two hour episode of 2020 right here on Denver 7. It begins at 8 o'clock. Coming up on Denver 7 News at 5, a Colorado company is taking action. Wyatt filed a billion dollar lawsuit against Fox News. No one in this industry takes any pleasure in having to make that decision to euthanize. It's one of the hardest parts of our job. Plus, a new bill hopes to give Colorado shelter animals a second chance at life. A look at why some think it's unnecessary and others say it's not enough. 